Hey guys, Nasif back with you for the uh, radar uh, part three. Looking to put everything together now that we talked about in the previous lessons uh, to, uh, to see how the radar integrates with the search single target track and TWIZ and hopefully get some missiles off at some bad guys. All right, so right now we're, uh, we're up at 30,000 feet in the uh, NTTR. I'll go ahead and spawn some uh, fulcrums in so we can uh, shoot some stuff. So let's challenge ourselves with a four ship so you can start seeing some displays there. So those guys should start appearing uh, any time now. Let's go ahead and uh, get our screens programmed in the meantime and uh, and we'll go from there. So got a two set. There's my air to air radar. I'll go ahead and take command of it and uh, and we'll get all that good stuff set up. So right now, uh, we should start seeing them appear. Uh, they're probably going to be beyond the 80-mile scope, but I'll, uh, I'll start letting them uh, appear and head uh, our way. In the meantime, I, what I wanted to show you was uh, on the radar, uh, I forgot to talk about it earlier, but you can see the um, uh, waypoint symbols on the target. So there's one, two, three, and then right there is my bullseye. So the bullseye is in the axe symbol. Bullseye number is in relation to where that bullseye is. So you can see as I move that cursor around, uh, the bullseye number is going to change as well as the bra. So right now it looks like we're starting to get some uh, contacts out there. Again, remember the carrots means those are range limited symbols. So I'll go ahead and bump out to 160 scope and we should start picking up some contacts. Yep, sure enough, out there at about 80 miles, I'm starting to see some bad guys. Knowing that they're pretty much on axis, I'm going to as bump just to narrow the scan down and get a little bit faster refresh rate down to a uh, 60 degree scan. So what I can do is I can take a single target track on one of those guys. And now I've got all my data. If I wanted to go ahead and bump into TWIZ now, I'll go do that into high data rate TWIZ so I can get a nice fast uh, update rate. Again, if I want to go normal TWIZ to have a higher uh, refresh rate, really no big deal. Notice that the only difference is, is the scan is just a little bit faster. Notice the single target track that I had uh, becomes the PDT and TWIZ, and now we've got all the other track files that's starting to build. Nothing happens automatically uh, until you hover the cursor over and then you designate each of those as a secondary designated target, or SDT. I'm going to go ahead and put it on pause just a moment just to slow down the uh, closure rate. So what I'm doing is I'm going over each of those and I'm designating those with a TDC in to turn those into SDTs. And notice I know that by the open box with the long uh, vector stick. If I wanted to uh, bounce between those, again, I would quick step, so coolie up. And now the, the star quick steps to each of those targets uh, all the way through, and then eventually back to the original PDT. Um, so that really is it. In, uh, as far as TWIZ goes, TWIZ is really easy once you uh, remember the HOTAS. I can hover over those guys and get some data. So the left side is the altitude, the right side is their mock, so they're doing 1.0. Uh, and now the, the star, the big key here is the star is similar to the lock and shoot target and a, and a Hornet. So the star is the one that I'm going to shoot. So once these guys reach about 40 miles, I'll go ahead and take it off pause. And then we'll, uh, we'll go in and go ahead and start taking shots at these guys at about 40 miles. So you can see that the, the Twiz is doing a really nice job of holding all these guys as SDTs. And then once I get ready to start shooting, I'll go ahead and shoot the leader. So there's about 40 miles. I'll go master arm hot because I've got the gun cross up in the HUD. I'm starting to get within range. So there's box three leader. I'm going to quick step to the next one. He's at 40 miles. Box three on number two. He's a little further out. I'll quick step to the guy that's hot. Box three trailer, and I'll go ahead and start cranking, and I'll bump down so I can uh, start keeping track of these guys. And I'll go ahead and put the axe symbol, the PDT on the, on the nearest threat to me as I, uh, as I start cranking out to, to limit their, uh, their missile uh, engagement time. Only guy I haven't taken a shot on is this one, so he's in range now. So there's box three and number four, 
And now I've got the, the PDT back on the nearest threat. So it looks like they're starting to maneuver. Hopefully they uh, don't defeat the missiles. And I'll bump out to a little bit wider azimuth just to keep everybody in, uh, in the scan. There's one, splash one. I'll go ahead and redesignate him. Got a couple more missiles left, so I'll take a shot on. Looks like he's already cold, so I'm gonna quick step to the to the hot guy. Watch three. And I'll crank away again to uh, minimize his potential to shoot at me. And I'll go single target track at him for the best missile data. And then one thing I didn't talk about in single target track is once you get out to about 60 degrees, put some chaff out. I can hold him out there at about beyond 60 degrees with that expanded azimuth. I can go all the way out to 70 degrees. There's another splash. Looks like my guy is starting to maneuver. And that's called the expanded azimuth. If I take him inside of 60, back to 45 degrees, that'll go away. And then if I take him back out, looks like he's already dropped. Uh, as I go out. So now I'm going to execute an out maneuver to try to get away. And hopefully they don't shoot me. Again, I'm trying to, to teach as I, uh, as I fly, so always not the easiest thing. I'm doing a good out maneuver, max AB, diving for the deck, try to get away from the threats while putting chaff out as I, uh, as I dive away. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, exit out of this. Okay, that's it for me on the uh, Radar Part 3. Hopefully you guys got some good stuff out of that as well as as far as putting together the flow of how the, like a long-range BVR setup uh, works using the radar uh, and the flow. In Part 4, we're going to talk about a very uh, brief uh, tutorial on the Auto Act modes. Uh, so I'll run you through the different Auto Act modes, what they look like on the screen, and how to get in and out of those guys. All right, so that's it for me. Knoxos out. See you next time.